Welcome to the Inner Circle, where we explore behind the scenes of Inner Space concerts. Who are the performers, the supporters, and the people of classical music? Iten Shana is a violist originally from Quebec, where he studied at Domaine Forgot Academy and Orford Arts Centre. He has received a Prix avec Distinction in Viola at the Conservatoire de Musique de Quebec in 2016 and is currently the assistant principal viola of Symphony Nova Scotia. He is also a regular substitute with Orchestre Symphonique de Quebec and Les Violin de Roy. Passionate about chamber music, Iten shares about his upcoming concert on March 16th and more about his mid-18th century Melanese viola. Hi, Iten. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. You have a concert coming up on March 16th, Dark Side of the Moon 2.0. Yes, 2.0. <laughs> yes. So are you excited to finally be able to rewatch this? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's going gonna, gonna to be really fun to to be able to play some chamber music and string quartet is just even more fun, I guess. And then with, uh, with my uh, really dear friends, so it's going to be fun, yeah. Can you tell us anything about the concert without giving too much away? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. No, so it's going to be all Mozart. I'm uh, going to play uh, two string quartet and uh, another piece called Adagio and Fugue. So uh, it's I think it's really it's it's not like the 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 happy Mozart that you are, that we all have this image uh, maybe from the I guess we all seen uh, the, the movie Amadeus and with the big laugh and everything <laughs> but it's 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 more on the, the dramatic side I guess and the darker side <laughs> and uh, and a bit more serial serial though I guess but it's really really beautiful music and uh, yeah we just I, I, I feel I I can't get enough of playing string quartet so just to be able to play it it's gonna be really fun I think yeah we're looking forward to it yeah and so you have your viola with us today. Sure. And is this the mid-century viola? Yeah. So uh, it's it's a, it's an instrument that is on on loan from a from a company in Quebec. It's called a Canimex. And uh, so it's a beautiful uh, instrument from the mid 18th century, if I remember well. Uh, it was made in uh, in Milan. So yeah, yeah, I've been playing this instrument for two years. And uh, yeah, it's just so wonderful to when when you just think about all the uh, everything the instrument live to and all the music uh, it has been playing since that time. Because when you think about we we we're getting back into even Mozart uh, era, so maybe this instrument played like Mozart when it was new music. So it's just mm. uh, uh, when you just think about it. Why you play the instrument? It just it just adds something to to, to the music, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of history behind yes. it, and yeah, that must be an honor for you to be able yeah. to have that privilege yeah, to I feel play very, on I've, such an instrument. I feel very lucky to be be able to play to play to to I guess share a part of my life with the life of this instrument. Yeah, because it's gonna continue on hopefully, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's this kind of. I guess with every instrument, it can be a really old instrument or a newer instrument, but it's just the more you play with it, the more you you go deep into the, the different tones of it, the different uh, how it reacts, because it's always a, a two-way thing. It's not just you play the instrument and then it, it, it just happens. It's when you play the instrument, the instrument gives you something back, and you need to learn how to how to play with that to get the sound that you want. So that's that's really fascinating. It's a fascinating journey to be able to play those instruments, but I guess any instrument. Yeah, Yeah, it's like a give and take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is there any differences in per se with this viola compared to the modern viola? Um, the, when, when you go it, from viola to viola, modern or uh, older, I think all instruments are so different, much more than violin, because the shape is not, it's still not uh, quite uh, perfect for for it's an imperfect instrument so there's always different shape of it maybe you you saw some with the, with cutouts or uh, there's different length um what else i mean e even just the those instruments those very old instruments most of the time they were much bigger and they were really hard to play so 
with time they have been cut down mm. uh, the neck has changed and all those things so so you go from viola to viola and it's going to be really really different so uh, this instrument is not that big it's quite light uh, but it's an instrument too that doesn't like uh, to be pushed a lot so, yeah <laughs> uh, the, the instrument i had just before was really it was an instrument that gave everything back all the time so uh, it, it was really fun for that, but this instrument is just if you give it, give too much to it, it's just no. I just I want I want fun for you. So yeah. it's it's just to learn how to play it, and then you just discover an all other, uh, all other uh, uh, timbre and atmosphere that you can get with a, an Italian instrument like that. So yeah. it's really fun. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I know with like guitars they always use different types of woods. Mm -hmm. Is that the same case for string instruments or does it tend to be kind of the same cut? It, it tends to be mostly the, 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 the same thing. Sometimes it, it varies a bit, uh, especially with viola because the, normally the, the back and the sides are made with uh, maple, so an other wood, and uh, the front with a softer wood. But uh, because maple is a bit heavier, sometimes sometime they they use other war, uh, other uh, wood. I don't quite remember which one, but yeah. the, the, and the thing with is to like I was saying just before, uh, because the instrument is not perfect, the luthier tend to experiment more. Yeah, so they kind of find different yeah, sounds exactly. or timbres. A bit like the the guitar world and the, the luthier in the guitar world. Yeah. they they are more experimental that uh, than the violin. Violin needs to be in this perfect shape that really sounds well. So yeah. You just continue the tradition, but yeah. And do you play, you play both the violin and the guitar? Yes, yes, I did the, most of my, uh, of my studies in violin, I did my, my master in violin. So I, I did the, the switch when I was 25, I think, something like that. So it's quite recent that I, I, I got to the, to the viola. So yeah, I, I, I know how to play both, but it's been quite, a couple of years since I haven't even touched your violin. So. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you just solely play viola now? Yeah, right now, just, just viola. It's just, it's, when I started, I was, and some people can play both, and I admire those people a lot. <laughs> but it's really two, instru two different instruments. It, mm. it looks a bit the same, but the, the, the technique is, the subtilities are quite different. So when you go deep into it, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's an all other world. So for now, and that's because of the uh, even my job and everything. I just I play viola and I like it. It's not because I <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I, I need to, but I, I really like this this role too of the this darker sound, this uh, this uh, intermediate voice, and everything you can do with the. So so I don't really miss the violin, but uh, sometimes I, re I I hear some. Some really nice violin. Oh yeah, that would be nice to play that or the pieces or things like that. But uh, yeah, it's I guess it's a past life. <laughs> <laughs> and your partner also plays viola. Does she? Yes. Do you guys often collaborate or do you kind of do your own things? Uh, we mostly do our own things. It's not it's not always easy to uh, to uh, to uh, organize everything so we can play together. Uh, and the thing, the thing is, too, most of the time when, when I got go back home and and uh, my my wife too, when she got back home, it's just we not we listen to some music sometime, but it's a bit like okay, yeah, no, just <laughs> let's just listen to silence or talk about something else other than than music because that's what we do all the time. So maybe it's like this kind of balance that uh, that happened, but sometimes we play together and it's all it's always fun, especially in. Uh, in chamber music or things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like there's not a whole lot of viola duets. No, <laughs> out there. no, but there is some. So, so it's it, it, it's fun, but uh, yeah, no. But there's some beautiful, I guess, string quintet with two viola or sextet or things like that. So it's something we we did and we surely gonna do again in the future. Yeah. So you've been in quarantine recently mm -hmm. again, and you have been before, and I hear you have a lot of interesting hobbies. Yes. What is your favorite hobby that you like to indulge in? Uh, that's a really hard one. This, this, is, this is kind of the, the, year, the year of the hobbies, <laughs> and because we have 
time to to get into it and that's fun but i really like it. i since last fall i've been uh, a bit into the, the into woodworking like oh, with hand tools and things like that everything uh, uh just trying to to work with the with the wood and trying to to learn genre and things like that so that's it's been a big a uh, big part but uh, uh i like i i i share a, a passion if i can, if i can say with uh, with that with jack that uh that uh, is with this series we we both love to to drink coffee to make coffee <laughs> and to uh just play with latte art and things like that so it's another thing that uh yeah i guess i indulge <laughs> just yeah trying <laughs> different coffees and yeah who do you think is better at the latte art uh i don't know i think i, I think we're we're juiced to do to do a competition with, <laughs> uh, with jack so maybe uh maybe in the next uh, next weeks yeah <laughs> <laughs> something to follow <laughs> oh that's great well thanks so much for joining me Ken it's Thank been really having great me. having yeah. you here and learning more about the viola I feel like it's an instrument that doesn't get enough spotlight so yes. it's nice to yeah highlight you and your playing and we're looking forward to your concerts coming up in March well, and Thank you fingers very much. crossed we'll be in person <laughs> yes I, I really hope so but uh, just to be able to for us to play together, it's going to be uh, amazing, and to share this with in person or virtually or any 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 way, it's going to be something to something to uh, to watch I think, and to hear. Yeah. Sure. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Circle theme was composed and performed by Caitlin Wheaton. This podcast was created by Caitlin with production support from Joe Pops of Joe Pops Design and Inner Space founder and artistic director Jack Chen. For more information on Inner Space Concerts and to get tickets for our live and online events, go to innerspaceconcerts.ca. Inner Circle is an Inner Space Concerts podcast. Thank you for listening.